So this is a tutorial on one technique that I like to use to create my trailer hits. And I'm not going to be using any fancy plugins. I'm pretty much just going to be using some samples that I recorded and Ableton stock plugins. And then there's just a lot of layering involved that I like to use. So let's start with this recording of mine. So to make this sound a bit more full, I'm going to be duplicating this and I'm just going to pitch this version down one octave. So we can tame the tails here and just lower the volume of these two. I don't really want a lot of this rattling tail, so I'm just going to cut it quite a bit. So now I still want more low end, so I'm going to be using just one of the booms that I created. I have tutorials on my channel on how to create these booms, so I'm not going to do this from scratch here. I'm just going to use one that I've created before. So maybe let's just use this one. And I want the boom to just act as the low end for this hit. So it's going to be about as short as the hit. I just want it to blend with the original sample here. If you have a plugin that enhances your subregion, then you can use this. But if you don't have one of those, you can just use a boom and add this. So now the hit has quite a bit more low end. And now I'm going to EQ these two samples here a bit. So the first one is just going to be the focus is on the higher frequencies and the higher mids for this one. So I'm going to cut the lows of this and also the mids. I'm going to dip it a bit and then just boost the highs a bit. So very clicky sound, great for transients. Then this one is going to be more mid-range heavy. So I'm not going to be using a lot of the low end of this one. I'm just going to cut the highs a bit and also reduce it in the mids, in the lower mids a bit for some mud. So this is pretty much just the enhancement of the original sample. In order to create a high end that sounds more like a trailer hit, we're going to be using white noise. So I'm just going to use operator for this, but you can just use any white noise generator for this. You could also use vital. So I'm just going to set this to white noise here. I'm going to set the spread to around 50%. So we get a wide high end. And then because we're going to change the envelope to again fit the original sample. So, so this could work. So this doesn't sound that great yet. We're going to change the sound of the white noise quite a bit. And we're going to do this by using rather heavy EQ boosts and cuts. I'm using the stock Ableton EQ here, which only boosts up to 15 dB. So if you're using a different EQ, you'll probably get away with just one instance. I'm going to be using two instances of EQ8 because I need to boost a bit more, probably. I'm going to just put a compressor afterwards. Usually to get this specific trailer hit high end, you're going to be boosting the lows a lot and you're going to be cutting the high. I actually have a video on my channel already where I'm doing something very similar to this. Actually just duplicate this. And then it's also just a matter of reverb. So let's see how this sounds with everything else. Just quickly process all of this together. Just put an EQ in there and a compressor. Actually we can turn the lows down a bit. And then maybe also put a reverb on the group here. Just helps with gluing everything together a bit. Increase the decay a bit. And now I'm just going to bounce this. And now the way I usually work is I make quite a few of these and then I layer them on top of each other. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to make another one. So let's just choose a different sample. This one might work. And also I'm just going to use the same processing on, on all of these pretty much. Depending on what kind of samples you're using, you might have to, you know, adjust your processing each time. And also going to use a different boom sound here. Just use this one. And I'm also going to be using different settings for our white noise. So 
So let's bounce this one too. So now we have two of these. And again, I would usually create a few more and then just play around with layering them on top of each other. So maybe let's just reduce the volume on these two and see how they sound together. I usually would then start layering other samples in there, for instance, more punchy layers. So just pretty much a kick sample would do. And I'm also going to use more noise tails like these two that I've created here. Maybe you've seen this in some of my videos. I have different folders for these types of elements. So I have three whoosh layers that I'm using for my hits. So if I want to create a whoosh hit, I have different whoosh elements here that I can just drag in and use. Usually create it also with white noise. Essentially just create a whoosh and then cut the second half of the whoosh pretty much. So like this. I also have my punch layers, which are pretty much just kick samples that very often I like to uh, layer some uh, stuff that I've recorded. And a lot of these also have just white noise in them as well. I also have a lot of these noise layers created. I just layer these on top of my other heads. So. These are all just created with white noise. The same way I did before, just uh, playing around more with uh, different EQ settings and different reverbs. And then you can get a lot of different variations of these. Again, don't be afraid to layer stuff. I usually have around eight layers for these type of hits. And once you're at this point, you can also start processing the group a bit. Just EQ and again, maybe put even a bit of reverb on there. It can really help to glue things together. Let's bounce this. And now you can also easily get different sounding hits with the exact same samples simply by changing the volumes of the individual layers that you have here. So we can make this body louder and this one lower. We can reduce the punch here and play around with the volumes of these two hits here. And so you get a lot of different variations. The more different layers that you have in your own library, the easier it is to just switch samples out and just get different hits. And actually these hits that I created here would again be just a layer for a different hit. So essentially you can have up to seven or eight layers or as many as you want of hits that already consist of eight layers. 